the clips you were watching were shot by the Nikon Z8 in 8K RAW. This video is going to cover the capabilities of RAW on Nikon cameras. Now that the ZR is coming out, there seem to be a lot of folks who are wondering how is Nikon going to do with RAW files? Most people are interested in Red RAW, but some still want to take on Nikon and RAW or ProRes RAW since that is also available in the Red Resolve. We have some exciting news in the camera world. ProRes RAW is available in DaVinci Resolve, as well as now with the ZR, we have the capability to record Red RAW on a Nikon camera. In this video, we're gonna talk about the capabilities of Nikon RAW and what you can get from it. So join me as we explore some clips and some shooting scenarios with the Nikon Z8 shooting in RAW and ProRes RAW. Since the introduction of the Nikon Z9, we have had ProRes RAW and NRAW internally on Nikon cameras. Now Nikon may be the first to actually be able to record RAW internally, and that's great for them. But some folks have been using the Atomos Ninja and other recording devices to get RAW externally from their camera. Now the upcoming ZR is going to be pretty much like the Z8, Z6, Z5, Z9, well, Z5 II in the fact that it can record RAW, but it goes one level more in recording red RAW. Are those files large? Yes, they can be. Um, but compressed files can be a little bit hard on computer as well, but this is not something that's for everybody. If you're doing it professionally or you're jumping into the professional level and you want to give it a shot, certainly go for it. Keep in mind, the files are huge for my video there was one that was two seconds long that was about 1.55 gigabytes the other one that's the longest 17 seconds that was 12.3 gigabytes imagine if you're recording for much longer than that and there are times i see in youtube comment that people are like well this is not going to work for me for long form recording well yeah and i think people tend to forget while we are looking at what the professionals are doing and seeing, oh yeah, they, this movie looks really great. When those guys are shooting, they're shooting for what? Maybe a minute, two minutes, maybe not even that much. They shoot a scene, they wrap it, move on to the next one. And typically they're shooting a lot of clips and they combine them at the end to make them look good. If you are recording an event and you wanna set it on a tripod and just let it record the entire event in RAW, you better come prepared with a ton of SD cards because that's what it's going to take. People who are used to recording on SD cards and want dual recording capability and they want to have the long form, yeah, camcorder or some other kind of camera with a fan that you're going to do constant recording is a better choice for you rather than something with a sealed body. And let's not forget, even though it's a sealed body, folks have been testing it and it's been recording up to an hour plus in Red Raw. So it can do it, but file size, that's going to be the thing that's going to be a pain in the neck. Now, what if you choose another flavor of Raw? Let's say ProRes Raw. And now that the Virtual supports ProRes Raw, I've taken some time to play around with it. So here are a few clips so you guys can see what this looks like. And when we come back, we'll talk about how big they were as far as the file size. So what do you think of the ProRes image? Let me know in the comments. Those clips were between eight and 27 seconds long. What you just saw were not the full clips, but just snippets of it. Now the file sizes are pretty much smaller for the ProRes. 
For the 8 second clip, it was 821 megabytes. The 27 clip was, 27 second clip was 366 gigabyte, about a 3.66 gigabyte. So much less smaller than the NRAW file. Let me spend a minute on the ProRes editing. When you first import the file, you can jump them in. This is how they look. Now to me, from what I recall, this is not the original look. They are a little bit darker. So let's go make some changes since you can do that. We'll come to clip section and we'll change this to Apple Log 2. You notice now the file has that log look and it's a bit brighter. So here we'll take the Z8 LUT and as you can see it's really bright. Now when I recorded it, I used ISO 800. I should have been using low 2 which is approximately ISO 200 and now that I've made a change we're right there we don't have to do much this just takes it exactly where it's supposed to be this is the look that it's supposed to have that I recall it was a rich uh, kind of orangey color from this one final thing so now that you've got that you can make adjustments as you like all the other controls are there for you to make adjustments as you want to change and dial in the colors as you like. Clay over here, you see some sections are blown up, but to me it looks fine. I'm not going to darken it anymore. But if you choose to, when you're editing, you can do that. So I had a bit of technical issue when I was recording. I didn't turn on the mic, so I missed some information. But this is to talk about the new um, NRAW to R3D conversion. It's something that some folks have discovered since 20.2 of Resolve, that if you just take the NRAW file, change the extension from .NEV to .R3D, you can use the red controls inside of Resolve. The files get a bit better, and if you've watched Sidney Baker Green's video, he has been talking about the blue clipping in NRAW for years, and they kind of figured out that this is really have to do with something in how with uh, DaVinci Resolve translate the NRAW files. But if you switch it over to uh, that R3D, then yeah, it comes out a bit better and the blue clipping is no longer there. I suspect Nikon and Resolve will take care of that in the future. But in the meantime, it is an option that you can use and the results so far has been looking pretty good. I'm gonna make some changes so you guys can see. I'm gonna use one file and so you guys can see the differences in how they look. So I've imported two image um, from the example you saw before, I made a copy of it. One is .NEV and one is .R3D. So once I imported them, you can see that the red seems to look like it's already been um, edited, but it hasn't. And we can show that by going to the color page. There's nothing done in this one. There's nothing done. Well, we should check this area. There's nothing done on either one. What occurs is because of how I had things set up. I don't have it set up specifically for raw. So what we'll do is when we edit, we're just going to edit at the project level. So let's start with the .nev file. So usually what I start with is three nodes. Of course, I'm not advanced, but you can do more. I usually have my noise reduction here, any kind of color adjustments, and my look on this side. So we'll come down to the camera raw section, and we'll change it from project to clip. This allows you to do any kind of adjustments you want to do at the clip level. And since we're over here now, it's going to drag the lot over. So this is a typical Nikon Z8 LUT. And as you notice, go to full screen, you will see things probably look a little bit bright, but this is recorded at ISO 800. Of course, you can tweak things. So let's do that a bit. So let's say we drop the exposure down by like minus one, which I think should get us down to about ISO 500 or so if I remember the low dot O2 all the way up to 800 for the ISO settings. And let's look at this. It says a bit more detail. She's got a bit more color in her face. Looks more pleasing. Now let's go over to the red file. 
and we'll start with making this into a log file. So we're going to clip. And actually, before we even do that, there's one thing I did notice when I was playing around with this earlier, is that if you go to red default, it pretty much almost looks like a complete image. There is detail in the air. It's a little bit um, less bright, but it looks nicer. Now, I am not a film person, but generally speaking, I see them kind of go a little bit darker when they're utilizing their images. Well, most of us, at least myself, I prefer that look where everything looks outside to remember that color. And looking at the Nikon file, this is pretty much how I would say things looked outside. Everything was bright, sunshiny. This is the look that I would kind of prefer, but of course, I'm not a filmmaker, so let's go back and make some changes. Let's go back to the red file. And if we now change the clip, and then we can change the color science. Well, usually it's at IPP2. I just messed around with it. So I didn't change all the settings back. So what we can do, if you leave it at IPP2, we know that it's going to be at Rec 2020 because that's what the Nikon um, raw file is coded in. And we'll change this to log 3G10. So now you have this look like you're dealing with a typical LUT file, right? So from here, what we can do now is just drag the Nikon LUT. Let me go back to mode three and drop it out there. And if we look at it here, still a bit on the, the darker side, but you seem to have lose the detail in, in here. And clearly you can see from the scopes how things look. It's definitely could use a bit of more brightening. Now, again, here's this ISO 320, that's my fault. Let's go back to ISO 800. If it was dragged it in cleanly, it should look like this, uh, the same ISO. But if you want to bring it back down, if we're thinking that it's going to be around 500 or so, it's pretty much similar. Still not seeing as much detail in the, in the hair. So you still definitely need some, do some a bit of more adjustments to get that look. And that's the difference right if you try to, to match them. But the easy thing I found if you just did the um, red default, you kind of have something similar to start with. Uh, let's see if we go to 640, it will change. Yeah, that doesn't look as good. You got a bit more detail in here, but it is kind of still not looking good. So this will require doing some adjustments in here, which right now I'm not going to do much of that. We can just try doing a bit of a lift. And let me bring down the highlights a little bit. Bring the shadows. Still just working only with the offset and the lift and the brightness. Still looking a bit brighter, but now if we go back in and like, let's just drop the ISO down to 500. Now we seem a bit closer to what we were getting on the edited uh, .nev file. So depending on what you want, you have some choices. If you just want to go straight to red default and let it deal with it, let's take off the LUT. This is the look that you get. So let me guys know in the comment what you think about that. This is just, you know, my way of doing it. I look at the scopes, things are kind of really in balance here as far as the colors go. I'm sure it's a bit brighter. But again, that's all depending on your taste of editing. I'm not here to teach you editing. There's lots of information about it. But just to kind of give you some information about how things look. All right, let's get back in the video. I just noticed that I made a mistake. So let me make a correction when I mentioned red default here. If you look over in the scopes and how things look, if we go over into the clip section, sorry, the decode using section, and then if we change it to, let's go back to the um, Rec 2020, the blue kind of spikes a bit. And let me put the Nikon lot on it so you can see what I'm talking about. So there, you have some spiking. And that's a blue channel uh, issue that we've been talking about. So if we change this now to red, white, gamut, RGB, you see it comes back better in line. 
So this is a good example to kind of show you what's happening and how um, Resolve does the translation for the Nikon RAW files. Rec 2020, spike it in the blue channel. And if we use red, white, gamma, RGB, it's more in line. So I know I kind of misspoke in the video, but I want to correct that so you guys can see for yourself. As you can see, the .NV files and .R3D files going through the Resolve pipeline, they come out a little bit differently. Red has a bit more controls than Nikon does, and I wish uh, Resolve would turn on some of those more controls for the Nikon files so we can do a little bit more tune into it. But again, each camera manufacturer have their own thing, with Red being part of Nikon, we can only hope that Nikon will now be able to add some of those features for the raw files that they use. So should you record in ProRes RAW or Nikon RAW? That's gonna be up to you. If you get the ZR, you'll have another choice in Red RAW. As you can see, utilizing Red RAW, you have a bit more controls, which is a good thing. But also in ProRes RAW, the file size tends to be a little bit smaller. Users of Mac will benefit from utilizing ProRes because Apple has integrated decoding engines inside their M1 series of chips. And that will help to translate those files faster than any other compressed codecs. So now that you've seen some examples of what you can expect with ProRes RAW and Nikon RAW, hopefully you will be able to decide which one is best for you. And again, it's not just a matter of file size, but if file size is the main issue for you, maybe ProRes RAW would be the one for you. I wanna thank everyone for watching the videos. Please hit the like button if you like the video and subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. I plan on doing more videos regarding Nikon cameras and gear and of course some of my travels as well. Thanks everyone and I'll see you next time.